Hey folks, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. Happy Monday. Welcome to my kitchen. I know you've been longing uh, for the triumphant return here. There will be no backdrop uh, from here on out. It was taking up my entire uh, apartment. So, sorry if you want uh, polished, uh, you know, journalism, uh, go to 60 Minutes for that. Uh, as always, Make America Sane again. That's makeamericasane.com if you're interested. I'm, uh, I'm going to Flint, Michigan in a few hours. Uh, my flight is at 6 o'clock if you're hanging at JFK and want to party. Uh, but until then, I wanted to express my thoughts on something I've been seeing that's really driving me insane. So let me be clear. Although I don't cover uh, President Trump as much as the rest of the Trump derangement syndrome uh, media out there, I do take what he's doing very seriously. He's obviously decimating uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, he's obviously decimating banking regulations. Uh, his comrades in Congress are now going after food stamps and other uh, programs for the poor. So obviously, uh, President Trump, it needs to be covered what he's doing. It needs to be exposed what he's doing. Um, and there needs to be, uh, you know, collective uh, resistance, if you want to call it, against what he's doing. So I agree with all that. I also agree when uh, people talk about that our, um, our way of life and our democracy is under attack. So two things can be true. Uh, I do agree that uh, with Trump, you know, Obama did some shady things also, um, but I think Trump has kind of escalated in terms of removing what we would consider a, demo a, dem a democracy. But what is driving me fucking crazy, and, and start sharing this video now, is all these articles I'm seeing and the hysterics on cable news, our democratic institutions are under attack. They're under attack. Please get to the bunker. Get down. They're under attack. My instincts tell me that they are under assault. The institutions of our government are under assault because of this president, and he could do some damage. Um, I got news for you. Our democratic institutions have been under attack basically since the mid-70s. And they've only been escalating in the last 10 years after a black man became president. And I got example after example I could share. But it's completely ridiculous that all these people are hysterical about our way of life is under siege. And if we don't come out now and stop Trump, we'll cease to exist. Yes, we need to take on Trump. The media needs to do its job. I think they're doing a little too much Trump and ignoring other things like, dare I say, uh, an American city being poisoned to death and nothing being done in, in the three years since. However, don't be fooled. We don't live in a democracy. And that's not a joke. It, it's fact. And I'm going to give you some examples. So if you don't know, uh, the state of South Dakota in, in November during the election, they had a ballot measure, which obviously you're not you're not voting for a candidate, you're voting for an issue. So they had a ballot measure that was based on um, an anti-corruption ballot measure. So uh, Democrats put together an anti-corruption bill, a uh, ballot measure that would put caps on the amount of money politicians can uh, take from lobbyists in the state. And essentially it was a good campaign finance uh, bill. And the voters voted to pass it, 52 to 48. So the voters, you know, in America, voters go to the polls, they vote for candidates, they vote for issues, and the voters passed this ballot measure that said uh, put caps on the amount of money these people could, the politicians could take from lobbyists and other uh, corporate entities. Uh, I was in South Dakota when the state legislature literally repealed what the voters had voted on. You're not hearing me wrong. The voters had voted for it, you know, democracy, and the elected officials who represent the voters repealed it. I didn't hear anyone ranting about democratic institutions under attack when that happened, did you? Now, we look at uh, Alabama. I went down a few weeks ago, uh, maybe two months ago, to Alabama. First time in Alabama, a bit of a culture shock. Hello to my, my friends down there. So Birmingham, Alabama, it's 74% seven, it's uh, African-American. Alabama overall doesn't even have a state minimum wage. A lot of, there's five states who don't even have a state minimum wage. So if you don't have a state minimum wage, it automatically sets to this 725 uh, federal minimum wage, which 
if you don't know, is, is a starvation wage. So 74% African American, uh, Birmingham, Alabama, the city council voted to raise the minimum wage from $7.25 to $10.10. Now, $10.10 is still not enough, but obviously it's better than $7.25. Again, the elected officials who were voted into office by the citizens, they set, put forth a bill that was signed, in, signed into law that um, raised the minimum wage. The majority white Alabama state legislature blocked uh, them from raising the minimum wage. And by the way, that's just Alabama. They're doing the same thing in Minnesota. They're doing the same thing in several states around the country where the states are blocking um, local municipalities and cities from raising the minimum wage. Uh, I don't know. Democracy means if you vote for elected officials on a local level and those elected officials do your business, in this case for the good, to raise the minimum wage, the state coming in and blocking it, isn't that democratic institutions being under attack? It's absurd. But again, you never heard that reported on CNN, New York Times, anywhere. And again, my point isn't to minimize what's, what Trump is doing, because I do think he's dangerous. But the charade that all of a sudden America was great before Trump, and now we're all fucking, we're all in trouble. It's going, we're going to, you know, North Korea territory here. It's absurd. Th these things have been happening out in the open before Trump, by the way. And you never heard pundits, you never heard people ranting about our, our, our democracy and our freedoms are under attack. Obviously, uh, I'm repeating myself here, but the whole, whole story of Standing Rock, North Dakota is an example of our basic democratic institutions under attack. So what you had was indigenous Native American uh, led peaceful um, opposition to a pipeline, which by the way, as we all told you, uh, as you said and I said, it's already leaking. I reported on that last week. Basically, you had indigenous led movement with thousands of other environmental activists from around the country and by the way, the world. Uh, descending onto Cannonball, North Dakota. I was there seven times. I might have, I don't know, three or four times seen some isolated incidents of water protectors throwing, throwing a water bottle at a cop or doing something that could be aggressive. 95% of the, the rest of the time, I saw uh, Native Americans and environmental activists banging on drums, singing, praying, not exactly rioting. Um, and they were brutalized. We, we saw it over and over and over again. Now we're seeing that, as I reported last week, the federal government is literally paying back the police department and the state of North Dakota for the cost incurred with brutalizing unarmed protesters. So I would venture to say democratic institutions were under attack uh, pretty much since April of 2016 all the way through February uh, when they raided the Oshetti Sakoan camp. And by the way, that was under Democratic President Barack Obama, who just got the Profile and Courage Award, which I did a video for last week, uh, telling you my thoughts on Mr. Obama and how courageous he really is. So Standing Rock was a perfect example. Freedom of, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, because many of these arrests happened when Native Americans and their, and their um, allies in the environmental movement were simply praying, praying. Um, freedom of freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press we saw was under assault. I didn't hear anybody in the corporate media ranting about our democratic institutions being under attack. Did you? No. I mean, the list, I could go on and on and on. We, now we're seeing in Flint. I'm going back to Flint today. We saw three weeks ago a town hall. Lead poisoned Americans, poisoned by their government. We could have a different debate whether it was intentional or not. Lead poisoned people, voicing dissent, voicing fr frustration that after three years, they still can't drink their water, the pipes still haven't been changed, they are clawing with their fingernails to get coverage, healthcare coverage, for the costs incurred by being poisoned, and six people are arrested for the crime of voicing dissent. And as I reported on Friday, there's been some shady, shady things going on with that investigation. Are our institutions under attack with that? So the point is, yeah, we gotta, you can't, 
we can't have selective amnesia here. And I, I don't think you do, but I, I think that when I see all these tweets from these, uh, these pundits and these writers and these journalists who never leave New York, never leave their fucking ivory tower over at the New York Times or CNN, they, they're on the cocktail crowd circuit, never, ever leave their bubble to actually see that, hey, the demo democratic institutions you're tweeting about, they have long ceased to exist in America. And I don't have enough time to get into a history lesson, but we all know what happened. Middle of the 1970s, the, the rules that stopped corporations and mega rich donors from buying the politicians, those rules started, be, started being peeled back. Then you have, you know, the Hollywood actor <laughs> slash social Darwinist Reagan come into office. He attacks unions. He starts deregulating the financial industry. They start with these trade deals, by the way, supported by Bill Clinton and these neoliberals pretending to be Democrats. Uh, tax cuts for the rich, tax cuts for corporations, deregulations, union bashing, and on and on we go. And no shocker, income inequality started exploding, starting in the early 80s when Reagan came into office. So democracy was under attack then. And democracy started moving towards oligarch oligarchy then. So this video is not meant to like cry over spilled milk and continue looking in the back, uh, looking in the past. I think we need to move forward. But I don't think uh, we could sit by and let our thought leaders in the media and the Democrats ranting and all they do is focus on Trump, um, you know, kind of re rewrite history because these democratic institutions that are real democracy, uh, to me, it's a lot more dangerous. What's more dangerous than a madman like Trump? coming into office and it being out in the open when he is attacking democracy, attacking the press very clearly, trying to attack freedom of speech. Um, what's just as dangerous as that is when those attacks are happening in silence and when there's no attention on the things I've mentioned to you in the media. Have you heard Democrats? I mean, we know Republicans aren't going to, but have you heard leaders of the Democratic Party railing about what's still going on in Flint or what, what happened in Standing Rock? or South Dakota, like I mentioned, or Alabama, like I mentioned, absolutely not. So uh, that's basically it. And, you know, I, uh, I'm very passionate about places like Flint and East Chicago and these issues of real injustice and real uh, institutions being attacked and real, essentially, uh, oligarchy taking over our government. Because it's not a coincidence when you see the income inequality funneling and exploding towards, I mean, the top 1% own literally 90% of the wealth in this country. It's insane. It's insane. And as I did last week when I took on Morning Joe, they talked about, oh, we, we should be talking about income inequality. We should be talking about infrastructure. We should be talking about health care, but we just can't. We have to focus on Trump. No, you don't. You could do two things at once. Last time I checked, it's 24-7 cable news. So, as I said, I'll be back in Flint, uh, get, get in late tonight, and I'll uh, be reporting tomorrow. There's a few things going on in Flint. I'm uh, not going to telegraph exactly what I'm going to do because some of what I might be doing might come as a surprise, surprise to the city uh, government over there. So thank you for watching. I hope uh, what I said made, made a little bit of sense. As always, follow me on Twitter at Jordan Chariton and YouTube.com slash TYT Politics. I'll be live streaming a lot of the reporting in Flint. So check out TYT Politics Facebook, and I'll also be live streaming on TYT Politics YouTube channel. Peace out.